everyone, and welcome to the first of the year Mish's Market Minute installment. I am your host, Mish Schneider. Thank you once again to Stock Charts TV for allowing me to bring this to you week after week. So as always, um, I have a full agenda. Now, some of you may have seen the video that I did with uh, some an outlook for 2021 focusing on food commodities, but I've also put together a PDF, which I'm gonna show you how to get momentarily uh, of my market outlook for 2021. It's a 16 page document. It's got 57 different stocks to look at, bunch of charts, bunch of conversation about why I'm looking at certain merges, uh, sectors and, and things to emerge, mega trends as we get into 2021. And so this is basically what I've chosen for today to cover with you. I'm going to give you the link to download your PDF in a moment. But we're going to look today at the Russells, the retail. Uh, we're going to look at the transportation. I forgot to throw that one in there. So let me put that one in um, in, in my little note here. MJ, a USO, DBA, Agricultural, DDD, Bitcoin, Coinbase Trust, Scorpion Tankers, Viacom, GoGo, Datadog, Junk, Blue, British, British Petroleum, Fastly, and Snow. And I've chosen it random. These are all just simply random uh, from the long list that I have given you, uh, just based on the fact that I wanted to give you some that are already in play, some that could still set up so that you have things to look at. Okay, so if you want to get the PDF, it's free. I suggest you print it out. I have one sitting right by my desk. Um, this is where you go. You would go to our uh, Market Gauge site and then uh, lpages.co. Um, and or you can just go to the site and find it. I'm sure you'll find it under my Mish's Daily every day. But once you add your name and your email and you download it, you'll get a nice little document there. And that's what we're going to work off today. So now let's go to the charts here and let's start right at the top at IWM. And as always, I'm going to show you the chart itself, the momentum using our real motion indicators and also our out what we call leadership, but it's really how an instrument is leading or lagging behind the benchmark, which is the S&P 500. So here is the Russell 2000. This is as of Friday, January 8th. And you can see that this thing has just really continued to rock it off. And we like this because this is a good sign. This shows where the optimism is in the market. Obviously, uh, you can assess here that what we've got is a situation where no matter what what bad news and headlines hit the tape. The market is looking forward, looking at more stimulus money, looking at the fact that manufacturing and the industrials could pick up. And this is really where you're seeing the optimism right here. Um, so if you look at the momentum, the momentum right now is pretty much in step with the price. I would be cautious if the momentum starts to wane as the price goes up. As we know, it could be a leading indicator, uh, not necessarily mean that I would get scared out, but if you were long, obviously profit taking is always a good idea. And if you're looking to get long, I'd probably want to see some kind of consolidation at this point. We're looking at now maybe around 200, 201 is the support. Of course, the 50 day moving average is well lower there. Um, but at this point, I'd say you kind of miss the boat in terms of risk reward. If you look at the performance here, you can see how nicely IWM is outperforming the SPY. And XRT, which is the granny to uh, IWM's grandpa, also, oh, this is, excuse me, XRT, is now also making new highs, has been making new highs, has been going up. You guys, I've been talking to you about this really since July. Momentum still in step performance is leveling off, but still doing quite well. So you can see these are the key areas that you need to keep your eye on as we continue into 2021 to really assess how optimistic the market is going forward. Now I'm showing you IYT. This squeezed out a new high here on uh, the morning of January 8th. But if you look at the momentum, it's not so great. It's just hugging here on the 50. It actually went negative for a moment. And it is trying to get back over this layered line, which would be showing some leadership. So this is really where I always like to watch because I feel that if you Look at the transportation, you really get a pulse of what the demand side is of the economy. And since 
consumers are looking very much forward to uh, the opportunity to get another couple of thousand dollars in stimulus money, and everybody's been sitting at home for months and months and months, that pent up demand to buy, to travel, to go and to do is huge. And that is why um, you're not really necessarily seeing it in the airline stocks yet, but certainly uh, we're seeing it in other areas, uh, particularly obviously besides the three of the modern family. Uh, as we go to look at, we've been seeing it now in oil uh, and also, of course, the rise in the commodity prices. And then also some of the other stocks that have been following up and going uh, up with the um, COVID, like some of the drug stocks, which we're not going to cover today, but uh, except for one, by the way. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens here. But nonetheless, keep your eye on this IYT because it's lagging, even though it might catch up going into today. So now let's go on to something I've talked a lot about. I've actually featured it for a whole uh, segment, and that is MJ, which is the ETF for the cannabis space. And I had been talking to you and to others about it clearing 16 on a weekly basis. Obviously, it looks like it's going to do it as the end of the week as I'm talking to you. So the question is, if you missed buying it on the day it gapped up, which many people have, including myself, um, now you want to see what happens here. If it holds that 16 level, I would probably use maybe here uh, around 16, maybe a little under 16 as a kind of a risk area. And then you want to see what happens if it clears over the 1750. But I'm thinking it looks pretty darn good right now. And if we just go back a little bit here, let's go two years back. You can see in perspective that it looks like it's expensive now. But if you just go back here into 2019, this was trading all the way up to around 35. So this could actually also double in value, particularly now that we have a Senate that's 50-50. That doesn't mean that I would expect federal legalization of pot anytime soon, but it would certainly mean at least that they would be considering easing the regulation, number one. And number two is they could be ignoring any bias violation of the regulation at this point as well. So uh, everything that's come out about the cannabis has been positive. You can see it's doing well on the momentum and it's outperforming the SPY. USO, I think we have to take a look at USO because this is a great area of the metric of what uh, people use for inflation. And it's been basing out and basing out. And finally, and we talked about this, this was one I've talked about with you so many times about how the momentum was improving over the 50 before the price did. And you can see the price finally did break out over the 50 here, and then it broke it. But look at the momentum, it never broke. So this was telling you that these dips were probably a buy, but even if you wanted to wait for the confirmation, really this was the time to be getting in here in middle of November, once it tested that 50 and held on to it and started to move up. So we talked about that, 30, 31 was the area to buy. Obviously now you're making some nice money, but more importantly, if we take a look at this, Well, it's a little hard to see here, but it's starting to outperform the SPY, and you can see that the momentum is doing very, very well. Now, one nobody can argue that I haven't talked to you about over and over and over again is DBA. <clears throat> and with DBA, of course, we've already taken some profit. Uh, 1620 was our second profit target. Now we're sitting with our tail. We'd love to add to this, but obviously we're going to wait a little bit for the dust to settle. I would like to see this get closer down to around 1570. That doesn't mean it has to trade to 1570, but if it can get anywhere about that level, or if it proves to me that it's going to hold above this 16, and what would be good, by the way, is just to look at a weekly chart on here. Because on the weekly chart, you can see that we're approaching this 200 week moving average at 1669. So that's why I'd like to see a little bit of a correction. And then for this to muscle up, you can see that it stopped at these levels, which also corresponds with that 200 week. But nonetheless, I do believe that this is going to continue to go higher. So I'm just waiting to add to this position. The next one, I don't know how many of you have been watching, but DDD which is another one that I have been following. And let's go to a daily chart on this one right now. We'll go back to the weekly. 
obviously this thing exploded on Thursday the 7th. And this was though something that we were long and we were talking about with you guys because again, the momentum started to improve and look at that, right when the price hit that 50 day moving average here, and the momentum started climbing here and started climbing over the 200. So this really was a perfect example of being able to get in on the basis of momentum and price in agreement showing strength with a really good risk. So obviously some of you might not may have not been in, but we actually added to this because we saw on this particular day, the day before it exploded, that it was going to hold 10 we had a good risk at that point. It was the 50-day moving average, which was a little bit lower than this. And then the news came out that they were going to do better than what they thought in terms of preliminary reports on earnings. As you know, earnings seasons is coming. And whammo, we went up 125%. So what do you do now? Let's take a look at the weekly chart on this one. Well, look at it again in perspective. If you take a look back at 2013, this thing went up as high as 100. So even though it's trading at 20, it's still one fifth of where it was at its peak. But you can't just run in and chase. It actually stopped pretty much right here by the 2017 high yesterday. It went up a little bit beyond and now is trading below. So you have to be looking at some kind of consolidation. Let's go back to the daily here. And I would be saying right now that my consolidation would be, obviously, I don't think we'll see 15. If we do, that would be a gift. But nonetheless, um, I would be looking right here now at any kind of consolidation. And we'll take a look at it again next week to see what happened. Now, the other one we've been talking about, and in fact, the whole world is talking about is the explosive move in Bitcoin. And I showed you how we had bought this through GBTC. We've already taken three profit targets in this and we're just holding a tail. Obviously regretful that we did not um, add to this, but that's okay. At least we're thankful that we have this to begin with and we're still holding on to it. So at this point, I just wanna show you what a parabolic move looks like. And of course, what you do when you have this type of situation is you look for a couple of things. Number one is you have to have a good trailing stop. So right now our trailing stop is somewhere under 30. Number two is you wanna see if it can come down at all, then where does it start to to show some level of support. And also you wanna to look to see if there's any kind of waning in momentum, which right now we're not seeing. And of course you can see that it's exploded in terms of its leadership quality. So that boat has sailed, but that doesn't mean it can't come down. There are predictions of Bitcoin going to 146,000. I've heard 200,000. So uh, we've got an IPO, which hasn't been announced officially yet, but it is coming up at some point. And that will be really interesting to see what happens with that IPO, to see um, if the regulations kill it or whether or not it just brings a whole new round of investors into the space. Next one we've got here is Scorpio tankers. Again, no one can deny that I haven't shown you this over and over and over again last year. And of course, now it's finally starting to give us some money in here. We've got... Um, 1373 up in this area, 75 is the 200 day moving average. So it could run into a little resistance, but the momentum is finally starting to pick up and sp actually starting to find some leadership. So this is one that I have been looking for the bottom on and we are long finally, finally making some money on it. Uh, it's been a patient play with a couple of probes along the way, which I'm fine with, by the way. And uh, and now if it gets to up there, we will take a little bit of profit. In the meanwhile, of course, we would be going to a no loss stop. Another one that I know I talked about, considering I did a whole one on media stocks with you guys, was Viacom. And I want to show you this. We've already, again, taken a couple of profits here on this one. But if you look at this, the high of 2020 is actually higher than where it's trading right now. The high of 2020 was actually right here on the first day of 2020 at 4068. So, so far the high of this move has been 4074. Wait, let me just make sure that's right. That is actually 2019. I'm sorry, 4113 uh, is, uh, no, that's still 12, 12, 27, 19. Let's go to, no, I'm right. It was a uh, high was 4068. And so far the high here is 4074. So yesterday it actually made a new 52 week high. 
And, uh, and now it's getting some consolidation. If we take a look at this one, by the way, momentum is still doing well. It was showing some leadership. It's come off a little bit against the SPY. But if we go to a weekly chart on this one, Again, you're right into the 200 week moving average. That's why it's always good to look at both time frames. So at this point, maybe some consolidation would be good again to see if we can power through this 4109 or this 200 week moving average. So that's something else to keep an eye on. I like this one if it holds basically uh, above 37. Uh, at this point, that's we have a trailing stop on this. But at this point, if we can consolidate anywhere here between 40 and 37, that would be what I would be looking for. The next one is GoGo. Now, GoGo is a wireless connection on airlines. Well, obviously, airlines have been something that people still traveling, but not nearly to the point since uh, COVID. But nonetheless, this is something that I really like. Now, what's interesting about GoGo is it's holding the 50, but you can see our momentum actually broke. So at this point now, you could do one of two things. You could be getting in and hoping that all of these lows around nine holds as your stop, or you can simply wait to see if we can get that momentum back over the 50-day moving average. And if the price is much higher, then you would use your 50-day moving average as a risk. And obviously, you can see it's not showing any leadership here. But this is one of the stocks in my PDF that I've picked, because I think this whole movement right here, I mean, yes, it could be triple tops. It could be a head and shoulders bottom as well. With here's a, here is a shoulder, a head and a shoulder, which means it would really have to clear like 1185 to 12 to take off. But at this point, I'm willing to make that gamble. We're long a little bit ourselves, just a little bit higher than here uh, with a good stop, as I said, under nine. And again, if the momentum improves, that that would be something I'd be looking to add at. DDOG, I don't know how many of you watch when I go on Fox Business. Uh, I'm a regular there every week, which has been something that wonderful that happened throughout 2020. But we talked about Datadog as my stock pick uh, at the end of the show, because this is data collection. And there isn't a lot to trade, uh, publicly trade on data collection. There are some companies but the companies actually are more privately owned companies. So that is interesting. This is one of the few that's a publicly owned company that you can trade. And if we take a look at this one right now, it is clearing the 50 day moving average. I'd like to see it clear hundred. We already bought a little tiny bit of a position with a stop here, but we'd be looking to add over a hundred. And again, Look at the momentum though, it hasn't quite caught up to it yet. So that means either we'll be wrong and we'll get stopped out or that if we add and this thing actually takes out a hundred, you'll see this thing fly in momentum. And then that would be great. Of course, it's also not showing any leadership at this point, still underperforming. But this is a mega trend. I really think you need to keep your eyes on as we're going into 2021. Now, a lot of you have heard me talk about junk bonds. When the market corrects, this is where my eyes go. Let's make this range more of a year range here. And then we can always go to a weekly chart. So if we look at this one, this is really where you see risk on or risk off because junk is companies that are underperforming, but would give off a very high yield. And that's why people buy the junk bonds. And so the treasury has been buying the junk bonds and they've been doing that for quite some time. So at this point, we're sitting here with some resistance and the momentum has waned a little bit, but it hasn't broken down under the 50 and you can see it's well out underperforming. So I think besides IYT, if you really wanna get a jump on any potential major correction in the market, you're gonna go here. You're gonna go to your junk bonds and take a look. If this breaks down under the 50 on momentum, and then the price breaks down under the 50 under momentum, that could be a good indication that it's time to seriously lighten up and buckle your seatbelts for a potential correction in the market, which considering how frothy it is, I would actually welcome, I would love to see an opportunity to buy IWM closer to 180, that would hurt a lot of the positions that people have, but it would be interesting at least for a much better risk opportunity. And then a couple of more left here. Let's go to um, blue. So the biotech space 
you know, the biotech itself made new all-time highs in 2020, but it's been very much dictated by what happens with the top ones like Moderna and uh, Johnson & Johnson and um, a couple of others, uh, Astra, um, AstraZeneca, those that have been influenced, of course, by the vaccine. But there are a whole slew of other stocks that have been underperforming, Gilead being one that's also bottomed out and is now taking off. And Blue has my attention because Bluebird bio, let me just show you here, just looking over here, excuse me, on a weekly chart, this thing was trading, this thing was the darling in 2018 before we had the big crash. It went all the way up well over 200 and now it's trading at 49. So if we go back to the daily chart here, we're already long this stock. But you can see you're just now clearing that 50-day moving average. And you can also see there's some resistance going to be coming in right around here, around the 49, well, it's over 49, around the 50. So I would also be taking a look at this because if it holds anywhere now between, say, 47 and 50, you can use either the 50-day moving average or a little bit tighter, especially if this starts to move up in slope. It's still kind of neutralizing here, but pointing down. And then see what happens here if it gets to the 200. This is a stock when it gets going, gets a lot of attention, like DDD in that essence, in that people don't pay attention to it. And then one day they pay attention to it and you can get these explosive moves. Momentum is great and it's starting to outperform the SPY. Next one on the list is British Petroleum. Now, it is an oil company, but British Petroleum has been very vocal about how they are reducing their uh, money in oil and gas exploration. And they're starting to look at another theme that I covered with you in 2020, which is how electricity demand is going to double and which companies are trying hard to cash in on that space. British Petroleum is one. Now, unfortunately, this took a huge jump of wants to clear the 200. But it's a great example to look at how beautiful the phases and the momentum work together. It was down below the 50 here and down below the 50 in price. And voila, it gapped over the 50 on this day. I wish I had been paying attention then. Just at the same time, it gapped over the 200 on momentum, great divergence there. And you had a good risk at that time under the 50. Like I said, I wish I had seen it. But I did start paying attention to it here and it exploded so fast. And it was the start of the year and we had so many positions and not that this is an excuse, I'm just saying, I wish I had followed this more carefully because we would have been getting in on this day right here. And of course we would have all been taking profits. But nonetheless, from a longer term perspective, let's take a look at a weekly chart. So on the weekly chart, it's only now clearing that 50 week, which is still sloping down, which means if we can see some, again, consolidation between the 50 week at 22 and where it's trading now, then again, we will have a good opportunity maybe to get in and then risk under that 22 to see if we can get closer at least up to the 200 week moving average. So that's why, even though we may have missed the first tranche, if you really think something is bottomed, then you don't necessarily say, I missed it. You just wait for a better and new risk opportunity. And trust me, it happens all the time. Next one is Fastly. In fact, I've had uh, sort of side bets with people that I would rather be long Fastly than Microsoft. But nonetheless, Fastly also has been up and down, up and down, up and down. It left this big gap here and it has bottomed here, it looks like. And now, of course, it's clearing the 50-day moving average. But once again, we are still under the 50 day moving average in momentum and we're still underperforming the SPY. So I wouldn't be jumping in on a Friday ahead of the weekend, but I would definitely be keeping my eyes on this because if we can get this to hug the 50 day and not explode like this can do sometimes, and we can get the momentum back up, then I would be a happy buyer of this and I would probably have my risk somewhere either around this 81 level or depending on where it is, if it's trading a little bit higher, somewhere underneath the 50 day moving average and this day, uh, which is also about 82. So you have to keep an eye on this and see where it goes. The last one that I'm gonna cover with you today is snow. Now snow is a new issue. 
Uh, it's a software technology company. Um, but I like this because at least it's finally showing me some indicator. Obviously, it's too early to show any kind of momentum. And it did come in with a 50-day moving average, which is great. But right now, you can see that this has come all the way off big correction. And now yesterday, Thursday, it cleared the 50. Today, it's getting a little bit of follow through. As I said, we have no momentum. But this was another one. If it holds up here over 300 in the next couple of days and doesn't explode, then I think you can see a nice move in this one as well. I would probably just risk tight somewhere under like say 295, 294, uh, if it breaks down under the 50. Uh, and then let's see if you can get this up to 350 and possibly even higher. So, you know, there's always a lot more that I can cover, but like I said, I really highly recommend that you go to the website and you download the, um, PDF and have a read yourself and keep it by your computers because hopefully it'll turn out like so many of the picks in there already have as a great guide for coming into 2021. It also will cover with you, by the way, a lot of the food commodities, the specific ones uh, that I didn't cover with you today, including sugar. Okay, so happy new year, everyone. I'll be with you all next week. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now. Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.